<laughs> Isn't it funny? We start this show, and uh, I've always had this newspaper on, and on the back of it, look, put your paper down and take a look what it says. It says, no, look on the TV. It says defensive mind. It does it? And we're always dealing with, you know, people who feel guilty are always defending and stuff anyway. This is so true. So anyway, hi. Welcome to the program. Great to have you with us. Welcome to the Good News Show. I'm Pastor Rick. And I'm Cheryl. And if this is your first time viewing, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is a show about hope for the future. Healing for the past. And honesty for today. We're, we're not smart enough to be dishonest. We're just very honest and we go through good <laughs> days and we go through bad days. We are real people. We, I was just going to say, we are real, real, real. Real people with real problems who have some real answers. Now, sometimes we don't follow those answers, but mm. we do have answers because uh, if you're watching this for the first time, this is obviously, we, we, we rely heavily on the Bible for our information, mm -hmm. but yet we're not religious nuts. We're not like, oh, you know, what? but we do believe in, we believe in love and we believe in forgiveness. We believe in grace. We believe in mercy. We believe in um, faith and truth. And more importantly, to those of you watching, we believe in friendship. We love you guys. Those of you who watch us on a regular basis and send us emails. and We were just talking. We've got to get our Instagram up and running and our tweets. and cause so our many people Twitter. Our Twitters, yes, so that people can twit, twit ha messages. Ha I think it's called tweet, but the hashtag, the hashtag thing. thing, gotta thing do yeah. the hashtag. So we're, we're we're trying to get modern. We're you know we're getting up in our age. I think that's why we're gonna have to rely a lot on Olivia because she's in that age where you know she goes, no, mom, you just need to do this. And we're like, oh, I, you know, I I didn't even know. I thought I didn't even know what Instagram was. In my day, tweet was something a bird did. You know that's what I mean? Right. And, but, and Instagram. It's like a telegram, but with a picture. It always has to be with a picture, which I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, I, I thought it was like instant oatmeal. I didn't know what Instagram was. I thought it was, you know, something. But anyway, well, welcome to the program. Now that we're, we're, we're rattling on about everything, today's topic on the Good News Show is this, coming up here, holiness. holiness. Great song. It goes, holiness, holiness is what I want. Yes. You know, I'm gonna, we're going to put this definition up here, but I'm going to give a little bit of what I think holiness is. Here's the definition. I'll have my wife read it up here. The state of being holy I love or definitions. sacred. I love those definitions because you're like, duh. The state of being holy, of course it is. Yeah, which, right. yeah. a All movement, right. a specific tradition within evangelism. No, evangelicalism. I can't even say that. Evang evangelicalism. 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 So now you've all... Wow. I think that has to do word. with being people that That's are... That's a 50 cent word. Thank you very much. Evangelicalism. Well, here's our Bible verse that leads us into our discussion here. This is from First Peter. God the Father knew you and chose you long ago, and His Spirit has made you holy. As a result, you have obeyed Him and have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. May God give you more and more grace and peace. Wow, that's good. I like that. More and you know, more. What, what do I, you know, I love how the Bible just says, and God has made you holy. Mm -hmm. You know, the first thing you think of when you read that, like, like, I'm not holy. But I love the scriptures because the scriptures don't call things as they are. They call them as they want them to be. Yes. You know, they're calling things into existence. You know, and I kind of always, how I best understood holiness was to put a W in front of it. Yes. I've always said that in holiness as being whole. And many of us are incomplete. And what happens to us is we lose a part of our lives, mm -hmm. you know, growing up. Or somebody steals something from us in the sense of emotionally and and, and here's what I've said about holiness is that if you want, you know, holiness is purity, and yes, that's all part of it, but I love looking at wholeness, being complete. And what makes us complete is that, you know, God is at the center, Jesus is at the center of our lives, like, like in the middle of the sun, and then we have all these things that make up our lives. You know, we have, I have my, my, my wife is a piece of the puzzle or a piece of the pie, and my daughter and, my, and the dog and, and, and my music and my friends and, and, and my church friends and, you know, the people I, you know, and it just, it makes it, and when your life has all of that, mm -hmm. you feel fulfilled, full and filled. Yeah. And then what happens to you is that if something is giving you a problem, one of the slices of the pie gives you a problem. It's not your whole life. Yes. And the, much easier to deal with. To a deal with A small section. Yeah. That's and then good. you, you go to good. the center of the pie and deal with the core of the pie. Mm -hmm. 
okay? Because the crust and the rough stuff's on the ends. Right, but you go to the core, get back connected to Jesus, you can deal with all these pieces. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you had a bad day at work, that's a piece mm -hmm. of the puzzle, it's not your whole life. Yeah. And, if, and if you've had a bad day with me, I'm not your whole life, I'm part of your life. And yeah. Olivia's, I almost called you Emily. Wow, that was amazing. That's her middle name. Yes, her middle name is a part of my life and stuff. So anyway, we're glad you're here on the program. And, you know, Cheryl's the one who, who is quite um, responsible for putting this program together. And I'm quite responsible for putting the Bible study together. So we work together as a good team. So here's the sayings that she got up this week. I'm going to have her read them to you. They're yes. awesome. The true measure of spiritual growth is not how much you've learned in the past year, but how much you've grown in holiness. Isn't One step at a time. I'm not who I used to be. I'm not who I want to be, but I'm getting better every day. Even one life surrendered to live in the light of holiness can impact the darkness for Christ. Mm. Isn't that great? Woo. Somebody's calling us on our phone in case you can't hear it. It's ringing on our, on our there we go. We just got it. If on. you truly understood the holiness of God, you would have a proper attitude about yourself. Keep that, wait, no, I just want to say this. Yes. We would, wouldn't be so judgmental because what we do is we tend to judge others from us and it's like, why aren't they more? But if we compare ourselves to God, we're like, oh man, we're all We're all up. in a work, a work in progress wow. and that's, that's one point I want to get across on this show because when putting it together, yeah. whenever you put in the word holiness, for some reason, people like the Dalai Lama who, <laughs> who don't interact with human beings. Yes, that's good. You know, I, so don't, I don't want anybody to beat yourself up. Yeah. Okay, my next slide is, in seeking after holiness, we are not so much seeking after a thing as we are seeking a person. The Jesus that's in me. Love for God is obedience. Love for God is holiness. To love God and to love man is to be conformed to the image of Christ, and this is salvation. Yeah, there you go. Walk in holiness. And Sorry that's so small on your computer screen here. Cheryl will read it for you. This is from Romans 6, 1 through 13. To walk in new life, we need help from our fellow Christians. We need to trust them, believe in them, and support them. And we need to be able to be honest about our struggles. Holiness will never be achieved alone and in isolation. That's so Isn't neat. that good? Yeah, you know, you talk about honesty. Jacqueline, mm -hmm. who's watching right now, mm -hmm. is neat. She gave us this little note, and, you know, we just called her on the phone and directed this to both her and Ruth, and mm -hmm. it was neat. She was just saying, you know, evaluating our friendships and everything. I'm glad, I thank God for her honesty. Yes. Next saying here. Yes, this is seven good things about holiness, and so you can go back and research these scriptures for yourself. Because now, if anybody ever sees something like this and you don't have time to copy down the scriptures, just email us and Cheryl will send you a copy of those scriptures or copy of this slide because it's kind of small to read on the screen. Yeah, and, and since there, it's on your computer too, you can just pause it right yeah. there at any time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holiness is glorious, Exodus 15, 11. Holiness is is the true identity of the true God, Exodus 15, 11. Holiness will always lead us in the right direction, Isaiah 35, 8. Holiness guarantees that God's promises are true, Psalm 89, 35. Holiness makes memories we can be thankful for, I like that one, Psalm 97, 12. Holiness is the garment of victory, and that's Psalm 110, Three. Holiness is the hand that opens the windows of worship. First Chronicles 16, 29. Okay, I want to add one more to that. Okay, yeah, this is please. a really powerful. This is from first book of Rick. <laughs> Holiness is how I describe Liv's new jeans. <laughs> uh, Liv has got this pair of jeans that she, yes. you know, they've got all these holes in them. And I had them when I was a kid and stuff like that. But anyway, she's looking at me right I now. I think I had them, but it was, was that, because I that's couldn't first, afford to buy a new pair of jeans. That, that's first, first book of Rick, okay? All right, let's go to the next slide here. Oh, my gosh. That was a little sidebar. Blameless and holy. And this is from Romans 8, 9 through 11. 
but you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. You know what is so neat about scriptures, I, I'm just catching this today, mm -hmm. is how they will say, you know, you're not this, all right? And, and you sit there and read and go, y yes, I'm controlled by my sinful nature sometimes, but the Word of God is always saying, is always putting things in faith and saying, this is how you're going to be, and yes. because as you think, so you become. So if you sit there and read and saying, I know you're messed up right now, but one day you'll that be That was good. that little grace right there in the scriptures. Yeah. We get a little grace. We get a little grace. Here's yes. another saying here. The closer you live to God, the smaller everything else appears. Thanks to Rick Warren. Yes, my buddy. Is that why you look so little? No, I'm just kidding, oh, honey. Oh, right. no, I'm just kidding. No, 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 just kidding. Being a Christian is more than just being an instantaneous conversion. It is a daily process whereby you grow to be more and more like Christ. Mm. That's a Billy Graham quote right there. You know, um, before we introduce Olivia, I, I was thinking this morning, you know, I, I, we went out and had a fire last night, and, and I gained a pound. You know, I'm back on losing weight, you know, and, and I want to lose a, a good, another 20 more pounds before we leave here. And uh, I was thinking of the fact that, you know, you said this beautiful thing. I went, oh, geez, you know, I, we sat by the fire and I snacked and mm -hmm. did a lot of, you know, and, and I gained a pound. And, and Cheryl looked at me and she said, his grace and mercy, his grace, his, his, mercy his mercy is anew every, every morning. morning. And I thought about that. I said, that's what Christianity is about. If we have to die to ourselves daily, you know, what are we dying to? We're dying to yesterday. Mm -hmm. Okay, I messed up. And if we don't start your day off with grace, you're going to have another bad day. Yeah. And then you'll have another bad day. And then all of a sudden... You say, what's the use? I, all, I'm going to have all these... I've had a bad life. Mm -hmm. A bad life is a guilty life. And mm -hmm. it's like, okay, this wasn't... I didn't, I, I didn't, you know, make the grade today. I didn't achieve what I needed to achieve. I didn't lose weight. I wasn't, a, you know, I gossiped today. I did this and... A, you don't beat yourself up. You know, you're gossiping, your negative attitude, your depression... Whatever, you know, if you beat yourself up about the fact that you're human, you're going to continue that the next day. Mm -hmm. You're human. So are we. You know, the thing about television, you don't get to see as much of the bad side of everybody that's on TV, but they all have them. We get married for better or for worse. We have good days. We have bad days. Mm -hmm. Maturity is trying to make those ba the bad smaller and yes. smaller for your own sake. It's not, you know, what people will think of you. It's just you feel better when you, when you do good. That's right. Anyway, I'm trying to talk. Are you going to, to introduce our lovely daughter? I'm going to introduce oh, okay. our lovely daughter. So I'm looking over here and, and look at that. Hi, Liv. I'm looking at you right now. How are you, dear? Here is our, our uh, I don't know if many of you know her middle name. Her first name used to be Emily, but when we adopted her, she changed it. And uh, now her middle name is Emily, but her first name is Olivia, which comes from the olive, meaning person of peace. So, person of peace, would you pre please? <laughs> person of peace, would you please? That's a tongue twister. Introduce our good movie of the week. Take it away, love. Thanks, Dad, and I'm doing gay. Um, so, this week's good movie is Cowgirls and Angels. It helps us appreciate the love of family, shows us how real consequences can be, and teaches us to search for who we really are inside. Great movie. It's on Netflix, and also it's a great country song. So go check it out. Okay, I'm usually all teary-eyed after <laughs> we do that you. segment. My wife looks at me and goes, God just told me something about you, and she said such a nice thing that I just started to cry. And But Liv recorded it, so she's going to save it for the bloopers and so stuff. So the like outtakes. That. You'll have so to wait until New Year's, which is when we, uh, yes. we upload we, we, all we, the outtakes the for the out, year. The outtakes rule uh, anything. But anyway, I'm just so a bit emotional here. My estrogen is kicking in. Oh, dear. <laughs> so anyway. Well, here is my favorite part of the show, because normally I cry after this segment. But here's my lovely, lovely wife with uh, her part of this, uh, which is... I'm yes, and my slide's going to come up as my intro because, you know, I always love uh, this. As we go into it, my slide says, Believe there is good in the world and be the good. So here we go. So my first segment is called A Big Hug. All moms worry about their sons, and Amanda worried a little bit more. This Los Angeles mother watched her young son Joey struggle in uncommon ways. 
in kindergarten, he got suspended from school six times for behavior he couldn't control. Sitting still was torture for him, and sometimes he just couldn't resist hitting himself. He was diagnosed at the age of seven with Asperger's syndrome, which is a disorder uh, of the high-functioning end of autism. Even more challenging was Joey's loathing of physical contact. His mother just wanted a hug, a kiss, or something just to cuddle her son, and she never could. Years went by, and it seemed she never would. Then, a few months ago, a new friend entered Joey's life. This friend named Roxy had fur, four legs, a tail, and a goofy disposition. And she made Joey so happy that he did something unthinkable. He gave his mom a big, spontaneous kiss on the cheek. Mom says, I get emotional just thinking about it. For all those years, he couldn't even hold my hand. He couldn't hug me. It was all part of the autism. But this dog has taught him how to give and show affection. He holds my hand now. He hugs me. For the first time, I got a kiss on the cheek when Roxy came home. While well, Joey's 14 now, and he said his new dog has made everything easier for him. I didn't have too many friends growing up, he said, but then we got Roxy, and I was be able to make friends ever since, Joey said. At home, I've been able to hold my mom's hand and kiss her and hug her and do a lot of things I haven't been able to do growing up. She opened my heart. A photo on the internet led Joey to find his best friend. He had been asking his mom for a dog, and when he saw Best Friends Pet Adoption in Los Angeles, they were having a special event. He said, we got to go. And right away, he fell in love with Roxy. Joey and his mom arrived at Best Friends at 7 a.m. on the big day, and within minutes, sparks flew. Well, as soon as Roxy met Joey, she totally ignored everyone around her. Roxy went straight to Joey, and they played together. It just sealed the deal for Mom. Roxy is literally Joey's best friend. He can be in the foulest mood, and she comes along, and it's like a light. She doesn't care about his differences. There's no judgment with her. She just loves him. Joey agreed. I've been having a bad day. Roxy can hear a tone in my voice. She runs up and gives me a giant hug and licks me to death, and almost anything she can do makes me happy. Isn't that great? As I just spilled my coffee. My next one is called... We're going to keep that rolling. A <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> Well, you know, a birthday is a time to request the coveted gadget, uh, to tear open an eagerly awaited toy. But for his ninth birthday, Ethan told his parents he just wanted to save dogs. I was a little bit surprised that he didn't want a toy or some kind of gift or something, but this is what he wanted, said his mom. Ethan had adopted their dog, Brooklyn, from City Dogs Rescue last year. He loved their organization so much that he designed a t-shirt and set up an online fundraising store with the proceeds to go directly to City Dogs Rescue. Ethan explained his mission on his website. He said, my name is Ethan and I'm eight years old. I love dogs. I have two dogs at home and love them both so much and the other dogs too and my grandparents foster dogs. Ethan's efforts raised nearly $3,000 which was do donated directly to City Dog Rescue which is a nonprofit that saves dogs from kill shelters and find them homes. Ethan's donation helped to save 10 dogs from being killed. Here's a few of the dogs he helped save. Here's Fly and Desi in their new foster home. And here's Libby and Kyra who have found their forever homes. Thank you, Ethan, for that. And my next story is called A Gift to God. Well, the first United Methodist Church 
is nestled in uptown Charlotte, just blocks from a homeless shelter in one direction and big banks on the other. The pastor there says, we're literally right between two very different worlds. Sunday mornings, we welcome that big crowd of people to come and have breakfast with us. Some of them are coming from those shelters. It wasn't a huge surprise to find that they were homeless in the pews last Sunday. A note, though, left behind in the offering that so many people are talking about. This pastor said a volunteer called him over. The volunteer picked up and showed the offering envelope and read these words. Please don't be mad. I don't have much. I'm homeless. God bless. And it contained 18 cents. It wasn't much. It was a handful of change, and yet it was everything. On Thursday, the homeless man left a voice message with the pastor indicating that he had seen this story appear online. The pastor called the man back and reached him at a soup kitchen at a nearby church. The homeless man told the pastor the gift was between him, the church, and God. The pastor thanked him for all he had done and assured him that they would honor his intent and his dignity. And then I found this, for everyone is important and should be treated with compassion and respect. And this man just wanted to remain anonymous and that this gift went straight to God's heart. And now my next story is called Rescued to Rescuer. And this is from the Dog Search Foundation. Well, there's a dog named Stetson and his handler, a California firefighter. They're part of a search and rescue team that for five days after the devastating earthquake hit Nepal, found a teenager in the wreckage of a collapsed building and got him out safely. There are six dogs in the search and rescue team and their handlers are among the group of U.S. people that go on disaster recovery and they're now in Nepal looking for survivors of this earthquake. The search dog foundation dogs are trained to find people who are still alive whether they are conscious or not. These dogs are actually rescues themselves, pulled from kill shelters where they ha would have trouble finding homes. Although their drive and energy levels would make them difficult to find them homes because they'd be difficult pets, but these are the very characteristics that make them well suited to disaster recovery work. Pearl, for example, a lab, went from being overlooked at a California shelter to working with her handler, Captain Ron, of the Los Angeles County Fire Department to help find survivors in the 2010 Haiti earthquake before leaving for Nepal. Riley was another shelter dog. In 2011, he and his handler, Eric, from the Santa Barbara County Fire Department went to Japan to look for tsunami rest survivors. And he says, they were just in the trash heap, basically, Eric said. They were just throwaways. And now they are honored in Nepal. So here are these wonderful dogs that people overlooked. And now they're out saving lives, giving back for the people that saved their lives. And that's the good work <laughs> for this week. Jeez. Well, you, I guess you can tell. I told you earlier that we're real people with r real problems and real answers. We, Poor Cheryl knocked her coffee over, and there was coffee all over the desk, and she's still reading away, and the coffee's dripping off the desk. And But anyway, that's just <laughs> wonderful, baby. You are the best. You, you are wonderful. Well, here's our verse this week. We'll just go through this lesson quickly here. It says this, 2 Timothy 1, 9. It says what, honey? He has saved us and called us to a holy life not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. You know, I, I just want to say this. I, while you were doing this, I was just <laughs> thinking about holiness, and I was like, I was, you know, 
my calling is I'm not to be a judge. I'm not a police officer. I'm not a protester. I'm, I'm none of these things that are, you know, I'm not a reporter that goes on in Baltimore. But what came to mind was the fact of, you know, everyone in Baltimore and all over the world is doing the best they can with the information they have. And I just think it's so sad because uh, in a song called America, we, we would always sing this line, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. We will never have the America that we once had until we start giving each other grace. Amen. I mean, it's just like we're so quick to judge a mayor and who's, you know, oh, she said the wrong thing. Well, whatever happened to he is without sin cast the first stone. We're all messed up. The Bible says in Romans 2, you who judge do the same thing. I watched what's going on in Baltimore, and we, we seem to be a place of revenge, and we you know, start to believe that, you know, that it, it, an eye for an eye again. And, you know, when I look at six officers, and I don't know, maybe I would feel incredibly different if that would happen to my daughter, and I apologize if I seem insensitive to it all. But I will just tell you this. I know that... You know, there's a reason that in the Bible it says grace and peace over and over again. And I believe that grace creates peace, and peace will create holiness in our lives. Here's what Billy Graham has to say about this. Mm. What stirs God most is not physical suffering, but sin. All too often we are more afraid of physical pain than moral wrong. The cross is the standing evidence of the fact that holiness is a principle for which God would die. And God died in order to make us holy. Because, you know, it's not about, you know, we're all trying to find everybody's righteousness, you know. And he was wrong, and he was wrong, and he was wrong. And I'll, I'll tell you what changed me is, is, is accepting his righteousness. Because if I ever looked at my own behavior or the behavior around here, it's really easy to just get so discouraged but we're, we're human beings and uh, we all screw up and make mistakes what is this in Romans mm. we all mess up but now you are free from the power of sin and have become slaves of God now now you do those things that lead to holiness and the result is eternal life yeah mm -hmm. it really is you know I, I think that's why you know we, we've been blessed with Olivia is that you know, maybe she looks at us and we're so honest about our frailties and we're so honest about that we don't have it all together. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, people her age just can see through everything. And they're like, you're asking me to do something that you yourselves aren't doing. Yeah. And we tell her, look, we're all striving for the same thing, but we're all dealing with the same challenges. Here's another quote from Billy Graham. Don't take the holiness of God lightly, for it is the very essence of his character. Mm. Yep. And that's what I'm saying. When you compare yourself to God, everything's different. When you compare yourself to somebody else, you're like, well, I'm not as messed up as that. Well, yeah. you really? You'll always find somebody that's got it more together than you do, and you'll always find somebody who's more messed up than you do. Mm -hmm. Here's than you are. Here's Hebrews 12. For our earthly fathers... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Talking about being dysfunctional, okay? We just said on a program here... Cheryl Hello, was talking mother. about my dad Hello, and her father. dad because they were Here both we very good right. fathers. Camp fathers. <laughs> That's going to be on our... <laughs> That's another blooper. Blue blue we both have fathers in our life. And Olivia's pointing because she thinks I'm a good father too. But I Liv, too. Liv, you <laughs> are a good father too. I would think that she takes the cake Yes, though. I can't believe we're talking hey. about this. Hey. Oh, can you hear her All saying right. hey in the background now there? Now we're going to regroup and I shall read the verse okay, again. Okay, well, let's go back to Hebrews. Thank you. For our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years, doing the best they knew how. But God's discipline is always good for us so that we might share in His holiness. Yeah, that's why we talk grace and truth. You know, it's not just all about grace. Grace enables us to go, okay, you didn't hit the mark, try it again. But there's a reality, there's a truth yes. of what proper behavior is. I mean, it, it is that. Take a look at Billy Graham quote here coming up. If you belong to Jesus Christ, you are called to live a life of purity and holiness. God wants your mind to be shaped by Him so that your thoughts and goals reflect Christ. I think that's the hardest thing about being a Christian is the fact of our own personal behavior because, 
you know, people are looking to us. Even though that once you become a Christian, you understand grace and you understand we're all doing the best you can, but the Bible tells us not to cause other people to stumble. Yeah. You know, if they see us complaining and they see us whining and gossiping and, you know, whatever, cussing and whatever you or, want. Or sometimes you see Christians with a yardstick trying to measure you up to what they are now and not where they have come from too. That's that's a tough one. I've always said this. I, this is a hard thing to do, but we should judge ourselves by our behavior and judge others by their intentions because mm -hmm. I think that people are all trying. So look what it says. And did I read this? Oh, no, no, make every effort. There you go. Thank make you. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Yeah, that's why I love that song. Holiness yes. is what I want. We're all striving. That's the goal. That's the goal. And we're probably never going to get there until we cross over to the other side. But I'll tell you, it's a good goal. Uh, it's a good goal to have. I mean, rather than oh, I give up. I'll never be. Mm -hmm. I'll never. It's have like it eating together. healthy. Yes. It's, it's a process. It's every day. You know what? I'm. I'm. You know, we say we call it dieting, but you know, yesterday was not a good diet day. But I'm dieting. I mean, I will do. I eat that way the rest of my life. What I don't want to do is give up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, it, because we saw it. There was a little period of time we started both gaining weight a little bit and. You know, and, and it's like, oh, wow. We, we well, it was wow. around my birthday, so it, you know, let's we, get got, that. we got a little carried away with the three cakes. You know, and I will tell you what is incredibly motivating. I'm sorry that the show is going a little bit longer than normal here, but I'll tell you what is incredibly motivating is the fact that, um, you know, I saw this video online, and maybe I'm going to try to download this video to play it for people. Mm -hmm. But this guy had this real, 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 real long rope. And, I mean, it's extremely long. You couldn't see the end of the rope. And the first part of the rope, he had red tape on it. He said, the red tape on this rope, he goes, is your life. He said, the end of this rope is eternity. He said, we spend most of our lives worrying about this little thing. There's the beginning of our wow. life, the middle of our life, then the end of our life. He said, our whole life is involved in this. He said, but here's eternity. So that's why wow. make sure you catch our Bible, stu our Bible study that's coming up. It's called Consider This, but the series that I've just started is coming up on the screen right now. It's, it's called this. It's called, is it, it oh, Oh, I didn't do that. I didn't do that verse, Liv. Uh -uh. Okay, thank you, Liv. Thank, thank you, for, you for keeping us on point. Yeah. We cannot be satisfied with our goodness after beholding the holiness of God, which is kind of a good lead-in for your rope story. There what you I go. just said about the rope story. Here's, here's, it is the fact that if you're just driven by today, mm -hmm. you know that is not enough motivation for life. That's you know, true. be driven by eternity because there is, without a single doubt in my mind. You know, eternal punishment, but there are also eternal rewards. Mm -hmm. and I'd rather call it consequences because punishment is a surprise. You know, consequences are things that you choose because you know if I do this, this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, but make sure you. Um, it's an awesome study, and I'm, we're going to archive it. So you know, even if you're coming in in like part two or three or whatever, go back and you can see the beginning. And each part will be archived on the past studies. So. And and we want to remind you that you know we have good friends. We call them our online buddies, and our online buddies consist of. If it wasn't for you know Center mm -hmm. State Bank, we wouldn't have the equipment to do this. If it wasn't for people like you that send in, I mean, there's pe people like you that are regular givers. There are people like you, you know, people out there that send in money spontaneously mm -hmm. I will just tell you we could not do what we want to do and I'm not going to embarrass a person as they say this but you know it we live by faith and we are out of money and we ran out of money for food I and mean, we didn't have any money for food and we just kind of you know, we were eating from the refrigerator. It's kind of nice because you were eating a lot of the stuff that yeah, doesn't... Yeah, you, you clean out the stuff that you, know, you kind of didn't want to eat, but it's... Hey. not used to seeing it kind of kind of being bare and stuff like this. And when we're, we came not, to this... We're not going to shun our daily bread. Yes, well, somebody lovely who we love out there, you know... You the, know the, the, you yeah, you know who you are. Let's do the little note. And uh, so after we get done the show, we're going to go shopping for food. So, you know, the neat thing is that God works through people. And, and thank God for people like you who listen to God's voice and do things. And for those of you who want to give and aren't able to, we do not want you to feel yes. bad. God wants a cheerful giver, not a fearful giver, not someone who gives because they, you know, you know, you feel bad and stuff like that, because he's looking at your heart. And I always want people who give because they're being obedient to God, not mm -hmm. because they're feeling bad for us or whatever, mm -hmm. because God keeps speaking to someone until that need is met. And that's the thing I, that's why I trust that there is always somebody that God's speaking mm -hmm. to. So thank you for our online buddies. And now 
Um, this is a kind of a long show. We're we're at thirty we're at thirty five minutes. But it's but it's worth it. So it's a maybe point. maybe we're going to grow to an hour show. It and we'll call it our O U R our hour. Our hour. And be our hour. No, we can't do <laughs> we our can't do that. hour. But it'd be called our hour anyway. Our hour. So this is our hour together. Well, anyway. Well, I should right. probably close in prayer and let these Well, I just want to say this. Please, if you're watching us wherever you are, please know that if you're not here in our neighborhood, we miss you so much. We're so glad that some, you know, some of you we get to talk to on the phone. Some of you text us. Some of you email us. And we just, but we just love you, love you, love you, I love you. And uh, we thank you for being our family. We thank you for being our friends. And we just pray blessings over your lives. And we hope that these messages touch your heart. And then when you, when you, you, you watch this on Sunday, that it's the first day of the week. And if you can't go out to church that, you know, this is your church for you. And here's a, we're going to give him a hug over the, oh, okay. here's, here's a hug oh. over, the, over the air, okay? And as soon as we get to see you live, we'll give you a great big hug. Love you, love you. And here's my lovely wife with our closing prayer. Yes. Well, that time has flown by, and my prayer is going to come on the screen, so pre please read along with me. Father, we thank you for the liberty that sets us free from a fear-driven, rigid list of do's and don'ts of what we can and cannot do. Instead, we choose to be led by your Holy Spirit. As the Spirit shapes our thinking and sharpens our senses, we become sensitive to behavior that grows our spiritual nature and the behavior that feeds the fleshly nature. Instead, we are to be bound by love which is not self-seeking, but instead looks out for the other person as we serve one another in love. As we live this way, you make us a holy people, pleasing and acceptable in your sight. May our spiritual nature be the driving force behind the choices we make from day to day as we submit to you and serve others. And we pray for this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Before you close, I just want to go to the camera here. Thank you, Liv. Do not miss next week, and I will tell you why. There was a man who passed away in the month of April who affected both Cheryl and I's life. He was the first one that really uh, introduced us to Christ. His name is Dr. Robert Schuler, and he, uh, like I said, he passed away, and, and we're doing a tribute to him on the show. And uh, it, just how he's, in fact, in, infected our lives. Impact. 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 We can't even talk. Affected and impacted. Impacted our lives. So we're just so grateful for him. So do not miss next week's show. God bless you. Have a this is a this is a, a good news show, so have a good week. And remember, I don't know if the last slide is the up. last slide comes up. Here it is. I love this. this Believe is a, there is good in the world. Be the good. God bless you. Bye bye.